Rachel, the claim that the vast amount of biological knowledge we have, particularly coming out of evolution, uh, can and should help us develop new uh, mor moral norms, new biological norms uh, uh, for our moral consideration. Uh, let's step back. You, you have looked at the relationship between evolution, evolutionary progress, which we obviously see, or evolutionary development, because progress is a very sensitive word. I'll take that back and say evolutionary development with moral development. And one of the question is, is the question of progress and is there progress in an evolution? And does that implicate progress in in, in, in some kind of morality. So what's the, the core deep structural relationship between evolution and morality? Yeah, so, well, so I think that um, the big question here, at least uh, for me and the one that I'm interested in, is how do the adaptive components of moral psychology interact with our institutional environments and our socio-political um, institutions to um, uh, you know, create conditions that are ripe for uh, moral progress, uh, but also that could lead to deteriorating conditions that um, would uh, make moral progress unsustainable or could lead to moral reversions. Um, and so, so I think that there's a critical role to be played here uh, for evolutionary thinking and thinking about the kinds of circumstances in which you know, a human moral progress is possible and might be sustained. And so, you know, historically, um, the standard kind of evolutionary uh, explanation of morality that had evolved in small hunter-gatherer groups where it promoted cooperation in an arena of intergroup competition um, ends up kind of boding quite poorly uh, for progressive moralities that, you know, hold that we ought to be extending our moral regard well beyond the confines mm. of our kin and uh, cultural groups. And so, you know, some people have looked at this and said, oh, like, you know, this leads to a great pessimism about the possibility of moral progress because our other regard, our sympathies uh, are highly limited or highly circumscribed to people that are like us, that are in our cultural groups, that are our family and friends and so forth. And it could be a natural thing like uh, like family or race, which is, you know, sort of a morphological, yeah. uh, yep. um, superficial commonality. Yep. Or it can be something that's developed yep. we see in today's world, which is nationalism, which yep. is based upon a, a nation state, some sort of identity. And we see nationalism as a, as a very serious and increasing problem in today's world. Yeah. And that's that's the critical aspect that the outgroups uh, are highly socially constructed right. and they could be constructed and rearranged right. in radical right. radically right. different ways right. as we've seen right. you know over the last so, 10 years even right so the argument um, is is those those restructurings are uh, and those uh, are coalescing are uh, evolutionary uh, determined because of uh, of how it's developed and that puts a serious con constraint that 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 yields so, the pessimism right that yields the pessimism but right. this is that, where, that's where why, i am so but this is why where you're going to make me optimistic yeah this is why i think that's misguided so okay. you know the, the standard the standard kind of refrain is to say well given the history of the evolution of morality the highly highly circumscribed altruism that we evolved to you know, dole out only to our close relatives and right. group members, right. um, that makes it highly unlikely uh, that we're going to be able to develop and sustain these incredibly progressive right. moralities. Yeah, right? That's about the way that I feel. Human nature is so, so this kind of like, you know, uh, an, a, sort of an innate resistant uh, Well, you've convinced uh, me on the pessimism. I want to hear the optimism. So the optimism is that I don't think that's what's going on <laughs> because you know, at the same time, look, we see in the history, especially post enlightenment, right, this massively expanding circle of moral concern, right? And you see, you know, the evolution of things like norms like the rule of law, um, you know, uh, and all of this, all of these other types of major moral innovation, civil and political rights you know, ethics, ethical treatment of animals and so forth. So these are all major innovations that have taken place. So the question is like, how is all that possible given this yeah, evolved okay. history? So clearly the evolved history is not placing such strong constraints. But you can't do that. So exactly right. what's going on there. Yeah. And so like what, you know, what I've developed with a co-author is a theory that what's actually going on is that our moral psychology is adaptively plastic, um, meaning that it evolves to sort of toggle toward tribalism 
or toggle toward inclusivity depending on the environment in which it develops. And so like, you know, the, a, a, a nice analogy is water fleas. So water fleas have this conditionally expressed trait. If a water flea is developing in a pond where there's a predator, it senses the predator's cue and it develops armor. If there's no predator cues present, it doesn't develop the armor because the armor comes at a cost. It reduces mobility. It's expensive metabolically. For human beings, same thing. Um, if, you know, in certain contexts where there is outgroup threat, threats of predation, economic competition, um, you know, disease threats, all of these kinds of threats uh, trigger highly tribalist or exclusivist right, right. That's moralities. Easy part. But, right, well, right, it, it's easy to trigger it, but where you ameliorate those cues, you then open up the, the capacities for the massive expansion of other regard and the ability to really sit back and reflect deeply on the norms that we have and think about whether they're justified and how they might be expanded. But that's not possible where the, the, where the outgroup threat cues are very salient. Sure. And so like, it, this leads to all sorts of interesting conclusions. Like for example, like you wouldn't think that you know, healthcare in a society would be really important for the development of inclusive morality. You might think inclusive morality requires healthcare, but you wouldn't see it feeding back into the development right. of the moral systems themselves. Right. And yet, like reducing outgroup threat cues, reducing uh, you know disease threat cues, these things could have huge impacts on the development of morality. So, so what you've done well is art, uh, is articulate the relationship between evolutionary theory and the development of uh, of in group protection. That that's the easy part. You're postulating the theory that 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 the, uh, that a moral plasticity is also given, but what you've not provided is anything other than that statement. You've not given it any uh, biological basis, uh, except that you you want you want it to be there. Or uh, do, do you have a, a a reason why it's there? Is there a reason? Is it human mental capacity? Ah, uh, oh, yeah, right. Well, I don't think you're not going to find a rational justification of moral claims in biological facts. It's just logically not going to happen. Um, so the question becomes like, you know, what makes various kinds of moral claims, you know, rationally defensible or justifiable or not? And you that's know, a whole other conversation. And that's a whole other conversation. Right. Okay. Um, but if you think that civil and political rights, the, uh, you know, um, alleviating global poverty and all of these, you know, caring about future generations. If you think that all of those things are morally important and justified, um, and you think that arbitrary discriminations are not justified, um, then you've essentially said, okay, look, here are these morally progressive uh, changes that we've seen over the, his over the history, you know, recent history. Um, how are they possible given the kinds of evolved beings that we are and the kind of case that, that we give is you know, uh, it's the result of this kind of adaptive plasticity, which gives culture a tremendous amount of power in the unfolding of these moral biological systems.